Welcome everybody to I, the Serpent Tarot for another pick a card. So today this is actually a viewer request. A viewer asked me to do a relationship type of reading. I don't do them all that often. I do them quite often actually on my private readings. And when it, People often come to me in private readings for them and you'll actually get a bit of a sense with some of the structure of, of this of how I typically look at relationship readings unless there's very specific questions that are being asked. Um, so that's, as I say, going to inform the structure of this, but I don't do them a lot on this channel, uh, but I'm happy to do them sometimes. Interestingly, when the request came through, I knew that my next uh, re set of readings that were going to be published was actually collaboration, looking at matters of the heart. So, so that I let go through. It's a broader thing. And then I thought maybe a couple of weeks later, I'll publish a reading like this, which is um, which I'm filming today, which is more about an individual relationship. So it's more about you and your person. Now, your person could just be a friend or something like that. But I am going to probably focus quite a bit on this around love or around those spiritual contract types of relationships, because that's what I was being asked about. And the viewer also asked me what my view of twin flames and so forth were. So I will, in this introduction, go through that. But what I want to do first is go through the poll choice because there's no need to either listen to what my view is or to agree with me for this reading because I'm just going to read what the energies are in the cards. So you can apply whatever your belief structure is to that. But if you're curious about what I believe, for whatever reason, then you can hang around for the rest of the introduction. But I just thought I'd go through the poll choice first and then talk about that and then go into the reading so people have that choice as to whether to, to listen to the whole introduction. So what I have here is to start the reading, I'm using the heart oracle. So heart energy, I thought that was useful. And, and I shuffled and asked spirit to tell me the combined energy, heart energy between you and the person that you're thinking of. And then there's a couple of other cards, I don't know what they are yet, underneath this, which shows the individual heart energy that's operating at the moment. And, and you'll see how that structure goes as I, as I go through it. So this that may help you choose. And of course, you can go to more than one reading, either because maybe you've got more than one person you want to ask about, or you feel like it's a kind of a combination. You can kind of see a little bit of a resonance with these for a couple in a couple of them. That's perfectly fine. But for pile number one, we have passionate heart. For pile number two, we have remorseful heart. And for pile number three, we have prospering heart. So that may help you decide where you think the combined energy is at the moment. And then we're going to explore it in quite some detail. That's the purpose of this reading. So if you don't want to hear the part of the introduction about what I think about Twin Flames, then by all means, just go to your reading now. The timestamps are in the description box below, and I'll see you there. If you stayed around, I personally, I know there's a lot of theories about Twin Flames, and I don't. I don't on any level claim to be an expert on this. There's probably a lot of nuances to it that I'm not aware of. So I'm just going on what I've heard in sort of other sort of like spiritual videos or whatever. And it hasn't really drawn me in because <clears throat> full disclosure, I'm asexual. I'm not particularly interested in relationships for myself. I read for a lot of people about relationships and I I have observed and supported friends through relationships through the years, but I'm, I'm just not really drawn to that myself. So this isn't sort of something that I would have felt that need to get into in any great detail. But for what it's worth, my personal belief about how the whole spiritual cosmos works, and it's just a belief, I'm not claiming it's right, is that we are all part of the divine, that effectively the divine splintered out in the, in the birth of creation to know itself and to evolve itself, to grow itself, with the concept that we grow in space and time. So, so the divine did that, to know itself better and to grow. And so we are all elements of that, and we all have our particular purposes for that. Now, it, it's entirely possible that if the divine in splintering itself out to know itself better, each of the elements, if we split in two to kind of like turbocharge the experience that we could have and speed up the experience that we could have. It makes perfect sense to me. So the Plato concept that we all split at the beginning of time and we're looking for our other half, the twin flame concept, all of that sort of thing, I think could be absolutely true. I personally think that you would not always be in a romantic relationship and you might have some lives where you don't even come across your twin flame or your soulmate at all. So I think because if the purpose is to sort of like accelerate the, the development and, and broaden the reach of it, then sometimes it wouldn't make sense to be together. Other times it would, depending upon what where your soul energy was at that time. So I absolutely believe it could be true. The thing I have a bit of problem with, and I don't know how strongly this view was held in the Twin Flame community. So if you are sort of someone who is in it, you might be able to tell me in the comments because I honestly don't know. But I've heard 
people say that, oh, what happens is it's, you know, a soul becomes so evolved and so spiritually advanced that it splits at that point and that eventually it coming back together has this exponentially larger effect on uh, the ascension process for everybody. Could be true. I don't know. I just, to me, it doesn't, to me, it doesn't make a lot of sense that I would think if you'd reached that point, you would actually be reabsorbed. I think there are times when we go off the karmic cycle. So, so it just really depends on how you view those things. I, I think that ultimately none of us know. And the more important thing is what do you feel in relation to yourself, your own development and any person that you come across, you know, and if you feel that, then, then, you know, there could be some validity to it. It could be the validity. In, that that does happen for some that instead of instead of ascending there's a decision and that splits out to do it again like but like to do it even more i don't know it's possible but i i'm very wary of anything in the spiritual community that purports that some are above others i do believe you can definitely learn more develop your skills more do all that if you focus on it just as if you focused on learning a musical instrument or you're focused on you know, studying some academic course, you're going to, you know, have more knowledge or ability in that area than people who don't. I just, I'm just wary of that, but that's just me. And as I say, I may not be understanding it. So I do, I do feel that it exists. And so I will refer to it. And if people, you know, if things come up in readings that I feel look like a soul twin or twin flame, I'll go, if you feel that's the case, take that as a confirmation because I try to be a bit agnostic about it beyond that, uh, because I don't claim to be an expert, particularly around twin flames. So if you are someone who, who does feel they're a twin flame and you've looked at it extensively, as I say, you'll have more knowledge about it than I do. So happy for any comments in the, in the comments below. Uh, but beyond that, that's sort of what I think about it. And I'm always open to, to any other information that might nuance my beliefs and so forth. So if you stayed here for that, thank you. Um, hope that was interesting. And beyond that, I'll see you in your reading. Welcome, Pile 1, to your reading. So you came to the reading where you felt that the collective energy between you and your person was passionate heart. This says, trust your voice to wake up others. Now, the interesting thing about this is this is, this is the energy for your person. This is the energy for you. And these are the sides that we'll be looking at with tarot and other decks all the way through this. For your person at the moment, their energy in relation to you is the daring heart. Learn to lead from wisdom. But for you, we have recovering heart. Step onto the road to deeper healing. So I feel as though the energy between you, whether you are in a love relationship, whether it's a close friendship, because it could be sort of passionate about doing something, collaborating together, as I say. This doesn't have to be about love. But for most, if we're talking about love, I feel like if there is... If you've met, presuming you've met, then there is a lot of passion here. But I would feel that what's going on at the moment is that your person is very much like, let's let's just go for it. Let's just, there's a kind of daring, courageous energy there. Whereas you, you kind of maybe understand that there's something bigger happening here. Now, it could be that we're looking at a reconciliation or a reconciliation energy is coming in because you could be recovering from a separation and the person could be going, let's give it another go. Let's just go for it. And given that, the issue may be, are they coming from wisdom, as this is saying? Do they really understand that this is the next step and that you're, you, you don't need to be so worried? Or do you understand more that you can't just kind of be on and off? So there's, there's, a, there's a disconnect here at the moment. There's a great deal of passion in whatever way this is. But there's a disconnect between where you think you are with this. And it, it, and it really makes me feel if there was like a breakup or some sort of tension or whatever, it's more your person has been the one who's been guiding and does deciding things. Because it says, you know, lead, learn to lead from wisdom. And it might be they need to, if they're going to be a lead in this, they've got to actually be a bit more wise and understand and empathize a bit more. It's like they may be a bit oblivious to, to what you're feeling if they're sort of on and off, hot and cold, whatever it might be. So, and one of the things we're going to look at here, one of the one of the, the lenses through which we're going to look is love language. And it wouldn't mind I wouldn't mind betting there's a dissonance there, because I think sometimes when we have tensions in relationships, it can be particularly around love, it can be that one expresses love in a different way to the other, and so each interpret this as a lack of love when it's just a different expression. So there's something going on there around this, but there is a lot of passion there. And there is the capacity to recover, but it just feels to me like it's been harder on you for some reason. So, 
So it'll be interesting to see what we get with with the, the tarot. So I'm going to sort of start first. I'm going to use a deck for you, a deck for your person, and then eventually later in the reading, a deck about the combined energy. We're just going to start off looking at the energy right now between you. The reason I use two different decks for this is that sometimes the same cards come up and that will tell me something. So I first of all, we'll just riffle shuffle here. And I'm not great at riffle shuffling. This is probably pretty obvious. <clears throat> And then shuffle overhand to ask for the energy of your person towards you at the moment. So whether or not you're together, whether or not, and I mean, this could be 5D as well. Like, so if you haven't met, if you've just kind of like sensed this person, they may be very much more ready to do something. You may be getting over past hurts or even karmic energies between you. I just think you're more aware of maybe the, the subtleties of this relationship. I feel like this person's a bit, bit more crash through or crash. You're a bit more aware of like, you know, there is there is always kind of casualties of this sort of thing. We need to we need to manage the passions in a way that will work. That's the energy that I'm seeing here. So for your person in relation to you, whether, as I say, you know each other, whether you're in a relationship, whether you're in separation, whatever's going on, their energy in relation to you is five of pentacles reversed, Queen of Pentacles, the High Priestess reversed, Eight of Cups reversed, the Sun, and the Knight of Pentacles reversed. I'm just going to move these up a bit so that we see these more fully. Okay, and then for you, is you in relation to them and this is just a higher level overview we're going to also have a look at the highest good that can come but first of all we want to explore the the energy at the moment between you so for you ace of wands knight of pentacles well that's interesting you see we've got we've got a dissonance operating here knight of swords eight of swords the chariot Temperance. Okay. All right. All right. So first thing that I would say is if you feel that this is like a twin flame or a soul twin, I'm not saying it isn't at all, but I suspect you have more, more either understanding of that or more, more a sense of that than this person does. And that doesn't mean you're wrong. It just, I just, I just feel like with the high priestess reversed here, this person is not necessarily seeing this as a big spiritual issue. They're kind of like pragmatic. They just want to go for it. They want to, they want to be with you, I would say. They see you as someone they would commit to. They see you as someone who would commit to them. So they're daring. They don't, they don't see a risk associated with it, and they're not sort of seeing this as a spiritual thing. They do, though, think that you are part of their life path. So that's there. There is something. There's some old emotional energy here. I think this is whatever is recovering from. I feel for most of you, if you've come to the right reading, there's a lot of lot of energy between you and this person, but there might have been something that didn't work before, whether it was in a past life or whether it's like, as I say, it's a potential re reconciliation or some energy like that. They're certainly not letting go of the old energy, but they, they think that they're pragmatic about it. The only thing is, though, that this person may not be someone who finds it easy to commit like on one level they could up there, but I think this is them thinking that you would commit to them. But whether they, they're almost, they almost feel like they're sort of like one foot in the door and one foot out the door. And it's sort of like, and I think they're looking to what you do. So if you, if you committed, then they might do it. But at the moment, they don't know if you're going to, and this might be because of whatever's happened before, but they do want to be around you. It's just that they don't, they're not, they're not seeing this as a sort of spiritual thing in the way that you might be. And you you are. You're looking at this very spiritually, very alchemically. You're thinking that this could be the perfect balance if it was worked out. So that's there. And you think there's a sense of destiny and balance again. These are both cards of balance. You know, the, the chariot is balancing head and heart. It's also destiny moving forward, forward momentum and balance. But you're you're kind of blocking it at the moment and you might be doing it for very good reason. 
you're kind of blocking that energy, whether it's sort of spiritually you're blocking it. So this person, even if they wanted to sort of come forward, is not. Or they are. They're, they're kind of wanting to move forward at a pace that you're not ready to do. You think something needs to be brought into balance and heal a bit before it. So you've got the same tension here. On one hand, you would like to see a commitment here. And it's interesting. It's falling in the same position. So I think there is a real sense of, yes, commitment, but it's almost like you're each looking to the other for the sign of commitment. Because on another hand, you feel like, do I go quickly or quickly or do I go slowly? You you kind of, they have one foot in the door and one foot out the door while they're waiting to see what you do. You, in a sense, have the same thing about how quickly you're allowing this to to move. You feel the passion and the, and the passionate energy is coming from them. But it's like, I think you're not sure, is this safe in some way? You can see that there's there's huge potential here, but your own belief structure is limiting it because you're not sure. And I'm not saying you're wrong. Because I do think there's a sort of energy with this person where it's, they're very much of what's happening in the moment. They're very much of what's happening in the material world. And even if you talk about the spiritual stuff, that's not really what they're focused on. They do, they do see you as part of their life path though, but it's like, they, it's sort of, it, this works out, that's fine. If it doesn't, that's fine. That's the kind of energy with them. And this is part of that daring heart in a way, because it's sort of, you know, like, you know, who dares win sort of idea. Um, but, you know, it's also, well, if it doesn't work out, maybe in another life or another relationship. So they're not, they don't give up easily. I don't mean to say that, but, but they very much look to, they initiate or they like to initiate. And then they like to see the commitment from the other person. And there's just something about this energy, whether it's about you with this person or whether it's about you with another person before where you're a little bit more careful before you commit because you're recovering from something. So let's have a look at some other Oracle cards. Just there's a couple of decks I want to use to get a little bit deeper on this. Then we're going to, as I say, look at the highest good that can come from it. And, and we'll look at the combined energy at that point, And then we're going to have a look at the love language. But the first deck I want to use, this is a deck that I very often use in the when I do private readings for this. It's a fairy tale oracle. The reason I use it is it shows very deep programming that we may not even be conscious of that is permeating this relationship. I see fairy tales as very early programming that we unconsciously take in. We often get our first sort of concepts of relationships and the world and morality from the fairy stories and, and cultural stories. So, and there, there tends to be a, a kind of universality to them, even if the fairy tales that, that we're drawing from in this deck don't come from your direct culture. So I just feel it tells us something that's operating on a very deep level. So I want to get that for your person and for you, just to sort of see what's going on. So for your person, we get the tinderbox soldier. Okay. And for you, Rapunzel. Okay. This has very interesting energy, I have to say. The Tinderbox Soldier is a very morally ambivalent card. And it does, in a way, fit with the energy here. And this is not to say your person is morally ambivalent. But there is a, a sense with your person that it's sort of, there is a sense of fate. And there's a sense of fate in this story. But there's also a sense of choices, daring, and and a kind of ruthlessness, to be honest. Like it's kind of like I will I will get my fortune, I will do what I am going to do. The tinderbox soldier is a soldier who comes across a witch who asks for help in getting something, getting a treasure, and when he sees the treasure, he decides to keep it himself, so he chops off her head. And he eventually, there's a prophecy that says he's going to marry a princess, and he does. But at the wedding feast, sort of these these animals are watching him. So there's a sort of sense of we are seen in our choices, but we also have certain things that are beyond choice. So this is an interesting person, and I think it might be why there's a resistance, on one level a resistance to the spiritual with this person, but on the other level not letting go and knowing that there is a destiny. And in relation to you trigger this with them, because I think what it is, is that they, they're trying to work out how they can sort of like have the fortune that they want. And they think, I think they do think that you could be their destiny in some way, but equally they, they're a little bit like a pirate or an adventurer or something like that. They're, they're, there is a sort of sense that they will move on and move on but they know that they're coming to a point where they have to make a bit of a moral choice and so forth. So I think there, there would be almost a sense of 
around them wanting wanting to sort of like crash through a crash as I say like have have the relationship have the passion but there's a side of them as well too thinking when does the other shoe drop you know who's witnessing this what is this really and is it my choice or is it fate and I and I just think there's a kind of a a push pull here so I almost feel like with them that if you're talking with them a lot about fate destinies you know soul twins twin flames that would that would trigger a kind of fear in them it would be better to sort of like do it about choice and fortune and what you could do together because this does suggest that together you could be very prosperous and you could both commit and you could both be meant for each other but it's like they want to feel that they've decided rather than that it's been decided for them and they want to feel that if that was viewed by others it would be viewed favorably so there's a very interesting energy here about how they view what they would do to get what they want but also what the, what they do to to go towards their destiny as well and that that is a underlying storyline that that runs through their relationships and is particularly triggered by you because i think they do see you as their 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 sort of soul path but it's like that triggers some some issues for them and it may well be that if there's a sort of karmic thing here between you that that they did take advantage in some way or they did they were too ruthless in the past and this could be what you're recovering from either in this life or another life so interesting and if this is not a love relationship it's sort of like the balance between how the two of you could do more together compared to you know whether or not this is sort of something beyond choice and therefore that they they would be ruthless about in some way so there is a kind of a ruthlessness in this person it doesn't mean that they're bad but just be aware of that and it's particularly interesting because with Rapunzel, this you are looking for this to liberate. You are looking to liberate the relationship. You're looking to liberate yourself. But it does suggest that maybe your recovery is not just for maybe them, but from other relationships. Because it, Rapunzel is sort of like she's sort of cloistered away, and she is looking for the the freedom using her hair, you know, and that's the, your beauty and your identity and all that kind of thing. You are looking for the one who is daring enough to do it, and this one is daring enough to do it. But it's like, is it a liberation? And what what is the cost of that? So there's a side of you that might almost have withdrawn from relationships altogether. So there's a part of you that can see this is good, but the, and the part of you that wants to go with it and then consolidate. But there's a part of you that's also still a little bit locked up in the tower. So you're you're pulled away from either something that's happened in this relationship before in this life or another, or just generally. And they they will go after what they want, definitely. But, but yeah, they have a little bit of a push-pull around the sense of destiny. So let's have a look at this on a kind of more pragmatic level using the Latin love oracle about what that energy says. Trust. Okay, so they trust you. They do. They do. So I think they're worrying about whether they're trustworthy. Not necessarily they break your heart, but like what would they do to get what they wanted, I think, is the, the issue. You offering so i think you're going to find that they they make some sort of offer move forward and as i say if you've been separated they're going to sort of try and come back there is something like that going on and that's not bad energy it's just understanding the dynamic here it's like the thing that for you would make you maybe feel safe and secure to come out of the tower going this is the one this is my soul twin this is my twin flame is the very thing that would like trigger this person <laughs> so it's like how you have the conversations and so forth Okay, let's just see. I do three cards for each about the highest good energy that can come from this relationship in this life. So for your person, the Emperor reversed, Two of Cups, Strength. Well, that's very nice. And for you, the highest good. Four of Wands reversed, Seven of Swords, Eight of Cups. Okay, so definitely for you there's a healing energy here. You're the one who needs to heal. I mean, there's, there's some issues. Your person has issues, <laughs> but 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 you're you're the one who needs to heal. And I think it's from like maybe sort of childhood issues or former relationships. You've maybe withdrawn from a lot of things. You felt like kind of a stranger in a strange land. So this is allowing you to negotiate 
a movement away from emotional energies that don't serve you anymore. So this is a healing thing. This is why it's saying recovering. Ultimately, this could be a very healing connection. It's just being aware of the dynamic here is important because this one is this one's more like Teflon. It's like they're not they're not as affected by these things as possibly you are. However, for them, there definitely is love. A very lovely connection, if, whether it's love, friendship, or whatever, a very lovely connection that they think makes them stronger, like the two of you together are stronger. They're also dealing with something about power. This is the issue. Like there's something where, whether it's from their childhood, you know, from previous relationships or whatever, there's something where this morally ambiguous issue about the use of power, ability, and so forth is is something that's being triggered by this, and it is something that I think can heal. So they do heal, but they heal in a different way. So let's use a, another deck again, just to get four cards for the combined energy between you. Then we're going to just look quickly at love language. So the combined energy, the highest good, picking up this passionate heart, like really that energy between you, which is distinctly passionate. The combined energy, the highest good of the combined energy is the four of pentacles reversed. The tower, wow, this is a very significant relationship with the tower turning up. The six of cups reversed. The ten of wands, yeah, this is actually, this has a lot of potential to be good for both of you. It's not easy. Tower relationships are never easy. You're very vulnerable to each other. When the tower turns up in, in a relationship reading, I think it's, it's a very transformative relationship. And I often say that the only power in the universe in relationship issues that's stronger than love is fear. We can be so strongly connected and so passionate that we become far more vulnerable. So I think it is very important to understand the vulnerabilities that you each have. Having said that, this is a connection that can take away a lot of the burden of each of your, your hearts. It does, does separate you from past patterns that weren't working and it does break down anything materially that is not sound. So I think there's a lot to be said for this. It's just understanding the, the connection between it. Okay, so I also want to just quickly look at a few other things. I want to look at the spiritual gifts on either side that go towards this and that can be used or understood to go towards this. I want to have a look at what stars guide each side. And then we want to have a look at and also what, what kind of like spiritual guides there are and then we'll bring it all together. So firstly, gifts that you're your person has, whether or not they are into the spiritual gifts that they have that could help in this connection. Are 11, Master Path, 11, the visionary. For all of that, they do have very strong vision. So they definitely can envisage what this could be. This is why they're a little bit more daring, I think. And they are actually spiritually advanced. It's just that I think they're very, I think they may have in a past life used spiritual abilities and magic in a way that they're not proud of. That could be what's coming through here. Then we have Ascension Path 3, Air, In-Breath, Decodes, Energies. They're, they're very much a thinker. They have very, very powerful mind. They will understand. They will like communication. Oh, actually, we haven't done the love language. I just suddenly remember. That's interesting that, that well, I did this first. So let's have a look at the spiritual gifts for you. Then we'll have a look at the love language. It was almost like maybe they had to come out. It's going to, to tell me that language, the way that they speak is very important to this. The spiritual gifts for you, yoga instructor, body and mind, you are, you are ultimately more balanced than they are about this. They're kind of separating their spirit and their, their mind. They've separated the spirit out of this, even though they are advanced, whereas it's more integrated with you. And Akashic Records, you know, you've got the sense that this is a soul twin thing and it's a confirmation of that. Okay, just quickly, I'm going to just put down three cards for their love language and three cards for yours, just to see if there's a dissonance at all, because this can be important to know. So for them, the Tower reversed, the Empress, the Six of Cups reversed. Wow, you're going to have a, this is your recovery, you're going to have a huge impact on them, I have to say around their past patterns. The love language for you, two of cups, nine of wands, the devil. Okay, all right. So you do you do see anything that liberates you from feeling alone and liberates you from, from feeling the sort of darker energies of things is definitely part of your love language. You like things that make you feel free of that, feel free to be yourself. 
um, you definitely like romance, like a romantic side. If they show the romance and the daring heart, that's good, that they are likely to be quite romantic, is going to be important to you. And you will be romantic and you will be seeking to liberate as well. And there's a kind of a sense of, of always having the energy to be there for the person, even if a lot is going on. So if, if, even if there's lots going on in their life, if you are prioritised, then that's very important to you. So romance, being prioritised around energy and the sense of liberation and freeing, are the things that you take as expressions of love. For them, allowing things to gradually develop is something, like not rushing anything. Like trying to get straight to the tower would freak them out because, as I say, they're trying to deal with kind of like I'm almost a balance between the spiritual and the pragmatic. They like nurturing. They like anything that sort of feels warm and nurturing, you know, cooking them a lovely meal, you know, like uh, looking after them if they're sick, that kind of thing. And they also want things that are very different from their family. So what I'd say there's a bit of dysfunction in their family around love. So things that don't remind them of that and potentially things that definitely don't remind them of their, their relationship with their mother, I would say. So they're looking for change. They're looking for a shift from what they saw in their family. So if you did things that look like the family dynamic, that would be a problem. But if you do things that are nurturing and different and give them time, that will work really, really well. Okay, we've looked at the spiritual gifts. Let's have a look at what, for each of you, what what kind of spiritual team energy is is watching over you. So for your person, we have Goddess Lakshmi, prosperity, beauty, and fortune. Yeah, a lot of this has to do with fortune right from the beginning with that. This is a very fortunate connection. I do think it's a good connection, and I think they know that, and I think they think you're incredibly beautiful, incredibly lovely. And for you, the energy watching over you is the Archangel Ur Uriel, illumination, inner power, ideas into form. Yeah, you see the spiritual side of this, really, whereas they see the beauty and the romance. And I think just understanding that, it's not really that they're, they're not on board, but they're just not comfortable in talking about it. I think that they've maybe used powers in the past in a way that they're not, you know, their soul is not really comfortable with. So just being aware of that is important. Let's also get a couple of cards for each of you from the stars to guide the energy. So for them... Sixth house, they need to serve others and they need to serve you. This is also why part of their love language is nurturing. They may, they want nurturing, they will give nurturing in some way as well too. They will want to be of service to you. And we have waxing crescent moon, the setting, set your intentions. Yeah, they're the ones who are probably going to be the actor in this, the ones that, that kind of, because they're the daring heart. And that's necessary. You're kind of Rapunzel sitting up there. You need, you need the person to come to you. And the energy or the, the stars to guide you are the ninth house, the spiritual side of things, your knowledge, your education. It's very much a spiritual thing to you. And the second house, but it's about also the life, the life that the two of you could have. There, there is a great sense of prosperity here if the two of you commit. And there is, a, there is an urge to commit on both sides. So that's very positive. So to finish off, I do think this is very positive. It has its issues. All relationships do, and particularly kind of like twin flame or soul twin ones do. But I think there's a lot here, pile one. We just want to get one card from the Rainbow Oracle for an energy of the combined energy of this as a sort of a summary of what we've seen. So we get creative engineer. You have a creative intelligence capable of multiple solutions. So you, you actually bring out the creative energy and there's a capacity here to engineer to work out how to make this work. I think this there's a very positive energy here. It may well have had some real issues and you may be recovering or you might be recovering from other things. But I think in your own way, the two of you help fill the the voids and the and the, the the sore spots within each other, so to speak. You know, like the, you kind of you, you are a really good balance. It's just understanding the different way that you look at it. Uh, and I think this one can be brought round to the spiritual stuff, but I don't think that's the way you start. You start with the kind of this the romance and the nurturing and that kind of thing. And and let them feel they're rescuing you because I think that also helps them with whatever guilt they are feeling about something. So I hope that that resonates for you. I hope you enjoyed the reading. If so, please like and subscribe. If you care to share in the comments, I'd love to hear. Otherwise, I hope to see you in future readings. 
Welcome Pile 2 to your reading. So you came to the reading where the combined energy you were resonating to was remorseful heart, which says forgive and move ahead. So it does suggest that if that's what drew you, that there's something in this dynamic that one or other side feels they did the wrong thing, or maybe both did. Maybe there was a breakup, maybe there was an argument, maybe there was a difference of, an, of opinion that got a little bit heated. And this could be for love or for collaboration, any of those things. As I say, you know, your, your twin flame, your soul twin, your significant other, in whatever sense it is, doesn't have to be romantic, but I am, I am mainly focusing here on love. So just extrapolate if it's, if it's a different sort of relationship. There's a lot of good news looking in this heart energy, though, I've got to say. I mean, we, we'll look with tarot and other things to see what nuances you need to understand for this. But your person, which is going to be on this side, has hopeful heart. An exciting surprise is coming your way. They want something to work with this. Like they, they have a lot of hope around this. Even if there's remorse, even if something went wrong, they have a hope that things will re-blossom. You see how there's like a tree, a beautiful passionate red tree growing in the heart. There's a real sense of new life and new energy and new blood going into this. So they have they there's a lot that they have at stake here and they're they're optimistic. So are you, because over here we have adventurous hearts set sail on the trip of a lifetime. It's like, it's almost as though whatever went wrong or whatever one or other of you are feeling remorseful about has, has shown you what this could be. So it's like this actually matters. Like, you know, we had the, we had the argument or whatever. Or it could be that, 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 that both of you, things that you feel remorseful in other relationships, you, you both know because you've learned from it, you're not going to bring it into this and you both see this is different. So whether it's that you've had an issue with this person and, and one or other of you feels remorse or whether it's that you've looked at past relationships and felt like, you know, I, I'm not proud of that or that I didn't feel that went well, but I've learned from it. This is the energy I get. Like there's a real sense of learning and being able to do something with this. And so both of you are ready to sort of either try again or try for the first time with each other, as I say, if this is more an energy from the past. So what I'm going to do, and this is what I do quite often when I do relationship readings privately, is I'm going to do energy, tarot energy over here for your person and tarot energy for you. We're going to start with the general energy between you. We're going to then look at that with a couple of other oracle decks in a little bit more detail. Then I'm going to have a look at the highest potential of this. I'm going to have a look at the love language to see whether there's any dissonance there. Because sometimes when we think there's a problem, it's actually that we just express love or caring in different ways. So understanding these things can be really helpful. And, and we'll then look at other sort of things to support it, including we will use a third deck, and I'm going to use different decks for these in case the same cards come up, at a particular point to look at the combined energy as well. So firstly, the current energy of your person in relation to you. Ace of Cups reversed. The Moon reversed. Ace of Pentacles reversed. I think for many of you... This remorse or this energy is probably about a past relationship. This feels very new. If not, there's sort of like there is really all of this stuff ready to, to, to spring forth. Two of Pentacles, Three of Cups, Six of Wands. Wow, okay. And the energy or feelings and so forth of you towards your person. Seven of Cups reversed. Seven of Wands. Yeah, you are feeling adventurous. You're feeling brave around this. King of Wands reversed. Six of Wands. Oh, you both have Six of Wands. It's very positive, Pile 2. Five of Cups. Two of Wands reversed. Okay, all right. So I'm going to say for most of you, the remorse or the issues is from another relationship. But if it is this relationship, this is incredibly resolvable. <laughs> like incredibly resolvable. But I think it, it's just more that you're both a bit wary from other things. Um, that's what it looks like. For them, there is there is the potential of great love and a potential of something that could grow and build. Aces are always blessings, even if they're reversed. But when they're reversed, to me, they haven't been activated yet. This is what's making me think. It's all hope, you know? It's all, this could be different. That's the energy there. And with the moon reversed, it's like things are becoming clearer and clearer. 
So there might have been a, you might have known each other for a while. You might have been friends for a while. You might have been dancing around each other, you know, and, and I'm just trying to sense whether there's something there. I think that your person is starting to feel they can see what this could be, but it don't feel like it's started. So if you if you are in a relationship and it's hit a bumpy patch, there's a whole other level to this that, that this bumpy patch is actually going to raise. It's going to take it to a level you didn't expect. So it's very good either way, but it's there's, there's sort of something not yet fully explored, but that energy is there and the wish to do it is there. They want a choice to be made. They want something material to come of this. So I, as I say, it feels like this is someone that you've been kind of like circling around trying to work out, you know, is there something here? Would, could we potentially be a couple, whatever it is? And, and they're definitely thinking that. They, want, they would celebrate a decision and they would see it as a victory. So they want that. It is possible now, now for some with the Three of Cups here that there could have been something where, where in fact, the remorse is that there, there had been an opportunity between you and initially they'd chosen someone else and they've actually realised that's not the right person, that, that the, the real potential is with you. So that is a possibility. If there's something like that, there's a kind of sense of reconciliation or, or that, that you would be the ultimate choice. But maybe they weren't sure about that for a while. But definitely they, they, they would like to see something materialise or reconciled if, if you've been separated. For you, you're very pragmatic about this and you're ready to move forward. So it's sort of like, as I say, if there was sort of someone else, you're pragmatic about the issues around that. But I think, I think for you, it's more that you've been in relationships with people where they have been too controlling. So you've learnt a lot, you know, you've learnt from things in the past where egos and control and actually going in different directions have been an issue. And you, this, this allows you the opportunity to let that energy go and go towards this sort of mutual victory. So it feels more to me like the adventurous heart is coming from the fact that you've, you've kind of sorted out some stuff from the past where ego and power clashes existed. And you're now ready, very pragmatically ready to, to go towards something that looks like it would really work out. So, so, you know, there's, I think for most, most people who've come to this reading, it's more that there's been past stuff that didn't work out with both of you, but you can see, you can both see the potential of this. But if there was some sort of breakup, you might've felt this person's was almost too controlling, but you've worked out how to deal with that now and you can, you've worked out how to make it an adventure rather than feeling you're being led along. And this person is sort of like they're, they're holding back now on what their dream is so that you can do that. Like it's, it's a very good energy, I have to say, even if there are uh, kind of any sort of challenges or whatever are going on. So it's interesting with remorseful heart there. So what I want to have a do is I want to get a little bit deeper into this. And one of the things I do in a lot of private readings is I use the fairy tale oracle to look at what I call the very unconscious programming around relationships. Because I think in fairy tales, we often, you know, learn our first sort of views and beliefs about relationships and life and morality and so forth. So I think by drawing that, we can see some very deep programming in, in your person and in you that could be impacting how you're interacting. And so that's I want to get a sense of that for you to understand some of the dynamics that are operating, particularly if there are any challenges with the remorseful heart there. So for your person, they get Bluebeard. Oh, wow. Okay. And for you... The tinderbox soldier, that's really interesting because that came up for the person in another reading. So it's an interesting, I mean, it's interesting with this. In fact, if anything, this could be saying that you felt in a past relationship you were too controlling rather than somebody else was given this energy, but I'll get to that. And you're, you're kind of remorseful about that, but you can see this person is more your equal. It, it wouldn't be an issue in this relationship. So for this one, Bluebeard's really interesting. Because Bluebeard is, of course, the story of the woman who marries and then her husband says, you can go to any room in this great mansion except this one room, don't go in there. She eventually, curiosity gets the better of her. She goes in and she sees all the corpses of the previous uh, wives. <laughs> so it's a bit dark on that level. So that's, that's the sense of Bluebeard that, you know, kills his, his wives if, um, if they break the rules. So there's something here about the rules for this person and fear about breaking the rules. 
So if they did, if they did, if there was a third person, they felt like that could have broken everything, but they're starting to see that there's still the possibility you could be together. If it's not about that, I think it's that they have been around relationships before where there were things that they couldn't talk about, couldn't couldn't explore, couldn't be curious about. And I think for you, they feel like there's the opportunity with the moon reversed to be far more open. So this is like, but they, they've yet to fully explore it and they're looking for a sign. But this is this is someone who doesn't want there to be to be blocks between partners, but I think has experienced it before. Now, the interesting thing with the tinderbox soldier for you is this is a very morally ambivalent story. It's it's about a tinderbox, it's about a soldier He's coming home from war and he comes across a witch and she says, you know, will you help me get my magical treasure? And when he does, he sees the treasure, so he chops off her head so he can have it. But he's also got a destiny to marry a princess, so he gets all this wealth, he gets all this sort of stuff in the material world, but he's also always being watched by magical creatures. So there's a sort of sense of the balance between your own moral choices and destiny and what the implications of that are. So it makes it very interesting with these cards here and with Remorseful. I do feel that whether in this life or in another life, whether in this relationship or another relationship, you may have made some decisions that you're not proud of. But the good thing is you've had the lesson of this. You've worked out how ambition works positively rather than negatively within relationships. You might have been in a very competitive relationship. It doesn't mean that you were necessarily at fault. We're just talking about programming here. And it's sort of like, how does one win? How does one find destiny? And how does one also find one's moral compass? There's, there's this whole issue around that. I think there's something about the dynamics in relationships for you that have been about that. What I feel is that this this, both of you want to be more open and more balanced. And I think this is giving an opportunity for you can both be victorious against your own demons in a sense by, by this relationship. So it's very, very positive on that level. But I think it does show the remorsefulness is sort of like a bit more nuanced. It's not really necessarily towards each other. Or if it is, it's been a bit of this, but you can break through it. You can be victorious. So let's see with the Latin love oracle for the kind of love energy between you. So for your person towards you at the moment, gossip. Okay, so they may think that other people are going to talk about this. They may they may sense that everybody else is seeing what's going on. But I think in a way that makes them hopeful. Do you know what I mean? Like I think I think they're seeing signs with what other people are saying and how other people are responding to you that makes them think, oh, this could be, this could be something. I don't think that's working badly. But it is interesting because you respond to if you're being watched. So if you feel people are talking about it, you may be a little bit less happy with that than, than your person. The energy for you, heartbreak. Okay, so you may still be getting over a relationship or you may feel that 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 you were too dominating say in a relationship or too ambitious in the relationship and you split and this is the remorse but like there is still the capacity to get back together I, I i think this is meant to work out but you are working through something to the degree that there's remorse it's probably more on your side but whether it's towards this person or towards previous relationships uh, and i but i think and it's making you start to really understand your the role of your choice and destiny and so forth but I think this one is hopeful, and I, and I think with good reason. So let's see the highest good. Let's get three cards for each of you for the highest good that this relationship can reach together. For your person, four of wands reversed, knight of wands reversed, seven of wands reversed. Okay. And for you... Two of Swords reversed, the Hermit, Ten of Pentacles. Oh, okay. All right. So I think that the highest good this relationship can, can do sort of spiritually for your person is put to bed the fears that the Blue Beat card is showing. Because there's something, there's some sort of like fear, lack of courage and lack of action that comes from that, that comes from some sort of family dynamic. So I think that their sense of blue beard, because as I say, the things that we respond to when we we're young with fairy stories probably tell us a bit about that dynamic as well. I think there's a kind of been a fear of their passion 
And I think this is to bring that to the surface so that they don't have the fear anymore. But that's that's where it's at. They're hopeful. They're going to need you to lead. Now, this is one of the things that's interesting because I think you've done that in other relationships and you felt like you overpowered those relationships. So, but but there, there's a better balance here. But I do think they're going to need you to lead out like you know they're, they're looking for signs with the gossip they're looking for all this they think it's all there but they need something that takes their hope to some other level and so for you it's actually saying you make a decision if you think about the tinderbox soldier thing there is a sense there where it's like am i just caught by destiny the highest order of this is for you to understand that you can make the choice and that it is a spiritual choice and it's a choice of commitment a choice of commitment and growing something together a legacy not of who rules or who has the most. So I think that, that this is a choice towards something long lasting, but it's a choice that you get to make. So it may be that this relationship is not, say, a twin flame or a soul twin. It may not be that there's a spiritual thing that has to happen here necessarily. It doesn't mean ha it could be, but I'm just saying that it doesn't have to be. It doesn't necessarily have the force of it has to be in this in this life, you know, regardless. Uh, so, and if you feel that it needs to be that to justify it, then I think this might be saying, well, no, it doesn't have to be. You can actually make the choice and it's just as spiritually valid. Uh, and as I say, you can choose this one who's hoping to be chosen. Very interesting. So let's see with four cards from another deck again, the highest good that this combined energy can bring in. So the combined energy of the two of you. The lovers. Well, there you go. <laughs> the page of swords. The Hierophant, the world reversed. Okay, so if this, if you two split for some reason, it's not over with the world reversed. If you are, if if this is you didn't, and this is based on other things, it's just at its beginning. It's got a whole a whole life potentially, or a whole relationship to go through. There's much more that can be done um, in this. Wouldn't be surprised if you got married, lived together, or some sort of formal thing coming out of this. Definitely a partnership. As I say, it doesn't have to be you know, romance, so it doesn't have to be marriage. It could be a contractual thing or something like that if it's not that kind of connection. But it's definitely got that capacity of, of being formalized. Great communication between you as well, too. Great communication. Like So this is what I'm saying, that the, that combined victory energy right from the beginning was a pretty good sign that this is good. Now, we are talking about communication, and I also wanted to have a look at, with each of you, your love language, because this is how each of you interpret love. So and and so you know some people it's like you know the way that I interpret someone loves me is that they contact me all the time because I need lots of conversation. But somebody else might be the exact opposite and think if I love someone then I don't need to talk to them every day. When I have the conversations they're going to be deep. But you know like we're very independent. And so it just if there's a dissonance there it can help to know what that dissonance is. So for your person their love language how they would interpret love from you is six of pentacles. The chariot reversed, the king of swords. Okay. And for you, your love language, how you tend to interpret that someone loves you is the magician reversed, the eight of pentacles, the eight of cups reversed. Okay. All right. So for your person, they do think that generosity of spirit is a very big thing. The more generous someone is, the more that they feel. And that, that doesn't mean you have to give people lots of things. Generosity of spirit doesn't have to be about material goods. But, but they do see generous acts as an act of love. They also see a lot of conversation, a lot of like philosophical agreement, um, a sense of right and wrong, like a sharing on that sort of level is a way that, you know, like it shows the love. They, they, they like things to be fair fairness, openness, all of that kind of thing, and generosity. They also don't like to be rushed. They like things to take step by step. And they like their person to understand that sometimes they're going to be emotional and sometimes they're going to be more intellectual and so forth, that they're not necessarily always going to be the same way. They need that kind of sense of, of generosity of spirit and balance to know that they're, they're kind of like, they veer a bit between the others. So a certain degree of understanding. So those are the things that, sh that will make this one feel, yes, loved if, if you show that. 
for you, you don't like anything secret. Now that's very interesting because they don't want secrets either with Bluebeard. Like they, they want everything open. So it's a very, very good sign. So, and there's a lot of communication. So I think one of the really strong, great things between this is the two of you are going to be very open with each other. You also like to develop skills and abilities with the person or feel that together you're becoming better and better and better at something. So this is also like, you'd be the type of um, love match that really did discuss your issues because you would see it as a way to grow and build the skill of, of being together. You, you sort of see, you, you see a partnership as, as work and, and a skill as much as anything else. You also want them to not give up emotionally. So they want you to be able to deal with their kind of like waxing and waning, emo waning emotions. They, you want to know they would not give up on you. If you, if you sort of like had any sort of issues. So a certain degree of like emotional commitment is important. So I actually think there's quite a good synergy between those and also a synergy between the, the programming energy. So again, I think that looks really positive. So let's have a look at some other things for you. Let's have a look at spiritual gifts that you each have that sort of like are important for this connection. So for your person... We have author, yes, yeah, speaking, writing, how they communicate. Very good communicator. It's very important for this. And also, indigo child, gamma generation, born between 1978 and 1988. There's a lot of indigo children generations in this deck. I think it just shows people are spiritual, people are psychic. This person has psychic ability, and, and some of it will become clear through how they communicate with you. And the stories they tell, the narrative they bring to things. For you... We have life path for the builder, earth. You like to see things. You, you're the one who's going to make this become something long term. You're the one who who is, you know, you're a little bit braver around this than, than they are. And tarot deck creator, visionary. So, you know, you may literally be very artistic. Otherwise, you you have the vision of this. You can see the vision of this. This is how you can be adventurous. They're hopeful, but it's sort of a little bit hidden. They're looking for the cues, the cues from, you know, the rest of the world and how they respond to the two of you together, from you, all of that kind of thing. You're the visionary and the builder. They are very psychic, though. They'll pick that up and they'll run with it and they'll communicate really well with it. Let's get you each a spirit guide around the energy so for your person saint bridget passion growth fire yeah passion you know hopeful adventurous there's a passionate energy here they do have a lot of passion for this and and you bring out passion in them and for you archangel Raziel, mystery secrets um, protected knowledge so this is very high order magician energy, very high order magician energy. This is why you have to be very careful about how you use your fate, your power and all that kind of thing. But this is an order of detachment that is necessary to understand things in a bigger picture. So this is very important that you are the person who's going to lead out on this. You are the person who, in a sense, is more spiritually knowledgeable, I would say. And therefore, you become the lead. And, and Razia will make sure that you do that in the appropriate way. So you don't have to worry about that issue. You don't have to worry about repeating patterns that maybe you've had in past relationships. Okay, let's get you both some stars to guide the connection as well. So for your person, we have Scorpio. Well, feelings run very deep, very deep and very psychic. This person has a very strong psychic link with you. And the 12th house, yeah, very psychic link. For some of you, you may not even have met. Like if some of you are seeing this as very much as a twin flame and you're dreaming about someone, take this as a very strong confirmation and it's a good energy. But be aware of the sort of things that, that when it comes to it, you're going to have to lead out and you and this is giving you time to prepare to, to think about your power because you have a lot of power, a lot of spiritual and sort of emotional power. So the stars for you... Jupiter, yeah, generous, generous, expansive energy. And it, it's the generosity of spirit that you have that is one of the things that's going to really touch the heart of this other person. And Virgo, yeah, you're the one who grounds this and brings this into being, gives it its structure and so forth. Very, very powerful sort of energy. Okay. So to finish off, I just want to get you a rainbow oracle card, which is a combined energy over the whole thing. So just uh, either a, a synopsis of what we've seen or a last piece of 
advice that spirit wants to give you. So, falling awake. When a situation falls apart, your darkest hour becomes the dawn of your awakening. Something, I would say, as I say, for some of you, this could have been a breakup, but there's a whole new chapter to this. It's not over. For others, things that didn't work in the past woke you both up to what you really want. And it's like, and again, I'm sort of feeling for some of you, this may be something you're seeing in dreams at this point in time. It's a very big yes that it's going to come, but you, it's it falling awake. It's so different to what the past was that it's inviting you to like let go of that remorsefulness understand that in the context of the learning from it so that you can really maximize what comes out of this so i hope that that resonates for you i hope you enjoyed the reading if so please like and subscribe if you care to share in the comments i'd love to hear otherwise i hope to see you in future readings welcome pile three to your reading so you came to the reading with prospering heart and that says look for beauty abundance and generosity so that already suggested a pretty good energy certainly a very good energy between you prosperity something that is growing something that is increasing in value all of those sort of things and it pretty much is is being supported by the energy for your person and for you as well on a heart energy because for your person we have knowing heart heed your intuition so i'd say your person's very psychic very intuitive and of all the readings so far, this would be the one where the person really probably thought this was a twin flame or a soul twin as well, if that's what you're feeling. You don't have to be feeling that, but there's a very strong spiritual connection here that this, this other person feels. And then you have trusting her, which is listen to your inner wisdom. So you feel it as well too. There's a, there's a definite recognition operating here. And one of the things I sort of feel looking at all that golden energy is like golden couple. It's sort of like a kind of the alchemical union. So I think if this is about love, this is an energy, even if we see with the tarot certain, you know, and other cards, certain sort of challenges that you need to deal with, there is a real possibility with this one that this is an alchemical union, a soul twin, a twin flame, whatever you want to call it, uh, that is very, very positive. But it doesn't have to be as a love relationship, though. It could be a wonderful collaboration, a wonderful friendship, a wonderful family relationship, whatever. But... Uh, I am going to focus mainly on this as a love relationship, but you can extrapolate as you will. But certainly from the outset, the heart energy of this is very, very good. Even if there are challenges underneath everything, intuitively, spiritually, there is a sense that you are more together than apart, whatever that means. Now, what I do, and I do this often in private readings, is I'm going to do one tarot deck with some cards for your person's energy towards you and a different tarot deck for yours towards them. I do that because it has different energies, but also because sometimes the same cards come up, which tells us something. And we'll look at that in general. We'll then use some oracle cards for a bit more depth. Then we're going to have a look at the highest energy that this can have between you. And we'll, we'll look at that both each two or the other and also in a combined energy. And we'll look at the love language that's operating as well. And then we'll use some other oracle decks and so forth to get other information for you. So firstly, the current energy of your person in relation to you. Page of Wands reversed. King of Swords. Seven of Cups. The Magician. Five of Cups reversed. The Chariot reversed. Okay. And you in relation to your person. The Devil reversed. The Six of Wands reversed. The Two of Swords. The Page of Pentacles. The Hermit. The three of swords okay so firstly what i would say is i think there's an enormous positivity here as i say we say and it, and it shows here as well too but i don't think you're together if you've come to the right reading or if you are there's still a sense of separation within there's, a, there's almost like a boundary still to be crossed to really get to the prospering heart the reason i say it is that firstly over here with your person page of wands reverse suggests a passion that hasn't been fully articulated yet so you're more likely with the King of Swords that there's a great communication between you, something like that. This person sees much more in this, knows intuitively there's much more, but it just feels like at the moment that hasn't come into being. They may be getting over a past, past love or they may be sensing that you are. So they're not rushing things. This person will be ultimately the one that takes it forward because you're coming up as a hermit, they're coming up as a magician. 
So you can trust, but they know, and it's not it's not that that you know one is better than the other, but one needs to be the instigator. I think this person will be the instigator. Just don't think it's happened yet. Or if you're together, they will instigate some other level that takes it to another level, but it, it hasn't been activated yet. But they've got a pretty good understanding of it. And they're very spiritually developed, absolutely. So it's like, I feel this, they're picking up something from you because there's some energies here for you. So I think they're picking up not to rush things with you. Because over here for you, you can see this is a liberation from patterns before that were not positive, definitely. But you're not yet sure, you know, are you going to be chosen? Is it going to work? You're, you're kind of getting over something by the looks of things. And, you know, the, the, there's some of that heartache or some of that heartbreak still there. So you've kind of like not been in a relationship for a while or you're, you're, you kind of keep a bit separate. You kind of keep it a bit ascetic rather than, than passionate. But you can see this could be something. And you can also see that you're going to have the choice. <clears throat> like you're going to be chosen. I think you kind of know. Like both of you kind of know. But I feel like it's, it's not rushing it at this point because I feel like you're getting over heartbreak break but but you can already sense in this this is someone you can trust and I do believe you can I do believe you can and I do believe they're going to be the one that kind of makes more of a connection to take it to this level that the two of you can be at but I just think they sense that that you're dealing with something from the past so if you're kind of around someone and you are getting over something you're thinking are they interested but you know like it seems like it seems and it feels like it's there but it's not happening yet i think that they can just sense on a really knowing and and loving level i think the things need to be a bit that they could scare you a bit if they came on too strong to start with so so that's nice it's a nice energy but what is always under everything with us when we have these sort of really powerful relationships is that we all carry unconscious programming about how we view relationships and so forth. It could be built upon from our childhood, could be built upon from previous relationships, even from previous lives. So I like to use the fairy tale oracle because I feel that fairy tales are a really good barometer of the programming that's that's unconscious in us about life and about what's safe in life and what isn't safe in life and about relationships and what's safe in relationships and what isn't so I just want to see what programming is within each of you that you're triggering in each other at the moment so the energy for your person is the little mermaid oh okay and the energy for you The Rose Elf. Okay. I think these show if something hasn't happened or if, or if the communication is awkward, kind of why. Um, because like with the Little Mermaid here, as I say, overall, I feel like this is a very strong person who will take the lead. But maybe they're not speaking yet. Maybe they're not yet saying, as I say, the passion hasn't been expressed. The Little Mermaid's a really interesting programming story, if that's the case, because it is about a mermaid who sacrifices all for love. And sometimes magic and unnatural magic has been associated with this. I think this person is very powerful spiritually. I think they know they can influence. I think at this point, because they can sense and know that you're dealing with some heartbreak, which shows over here, and we'll talk about this, that they are not going to do anything that influences you. So they're holding back at the moment. Um, even if that is of a sacrifice of their love and their passion at the moment, they're holding back to make things work. They will, they will put the other first. But they also have magic, so it's a very interesting thing. But this is also why I think you can trust this person. I think they do, they would be prepared to sacrifice for love. But the sacrifice they're making at the moment, I think, is not pushing things before you're ready. For you, the Rose Elf, there's something that's happened in the past because this is all about a, a girl who has a lover and her brother kills the lover, and eventually that all comes to, to the surface. So there is something about some injustice or something wrong or some heartache from the past. And so you're wary. But you do see this person, and I think it's true, as being able to sort of take you away from that energy. So so I think it is right to trust, but you are still carrying that kind of that kind of energy. This story, though, does say that eventually the truth will out and eventually the healing will occur. So I think that you know that. You're just... It's all being done very much on a kind of spiritual, energetic level at the moment. It hasn't truly been spoken. But as I say, I feel like this person has a very good sense of timing. It'll be very interesting when we look at the love language because I think they're very, they're very attuned to anybody that they love. 
which is a nice energy to have around it. So let's see how it's working out kind of in general love energy between you at the moment using the Latin love oracle. So for them at the moment, fight. Okay. Now, the interesting thing is this could be saying that part of the, the passion between you comes out in banter, particularly like with the king of swords there, wit, banter and so forth. Otherwise, I think it's that, that they will fight for this. But they will fight for it, I think, by, by waiting and getting the timing. There might also be that they literally want to champion you against somebody else. So if you have been heart, heartbroken by somebody who, who really treated you badly, they may know who that person is and they would be ready to be your champion. So your energy in relation to them, love energy, unconditional love. Yeah, you want unconditional love, but I, and I think you'll get it. I think also that you trust, and when you find, that could occur. I mean, it is a good energy. It's a prospering heart between you. So let's have a look at the highest good that this connection can have for each of you. So from your person's perspective, four of wands reversed, six of pentacles, ace of swords reversed, and for you, Ten of Pentacles, Knight of Cups, the Hierophant reversed. Okay, all right. So for them, they have their own stuff around family relationships. They may well have seen things not work. They're, they're really highly tuned empathy and emotional maturity, I think, may have come from seeing where things don't work. And they understand and they're very generous. Their spirit is very generous. They will take their time and not say what they see or think until it's ready. They've seen conflict. They want to see a generosity. So there's sort of like a capacity here to be generous and supportive rather than being in combat. So there's something about combat as well for them. I think maybe, as I say, their family dynamics or, or earlier relationships. But this is, this is a much more generous energy that's operating here. So it's moving out of conflict but it's like it's still not spoken yet for some reason. For you, definitely long term. Maybe not. You may the two of you may not want to do something as conventional as get married. You you could. It's not saying you couldn't. But this is sort of like what is different and spiritually strong between you it has has a real sense for romance and for long term, long term prosperity and prosperity. Like you definitely the two of you together could be like a power couple or a golden couple. So let's use another tarot deck to see the combined energy for the highest good that comes from this connection. Nine of Pentacles, Ace of Swords reversed. It's connected to the vision that, that your person has. The Hanged Man reversed. The Eight of Wands reversed. Okay. I think this is saying, this is the type of relationship. I kind of don't know that this is necessarily a soul twin or twin flame. I think this is more a relationship of choice. And there's a lot to be said for that. Um, so it's kind of like the high school does this is a relationship where whatever happens between you, you both could could if you needed to be on your own and prosper. So it's not like a kind of a codependent relationship at all. What it's going to be has yet to be worked out and you'll work it out together. And it'll make both of you see things very differently and it won't be one that's rushed. But I think it's sort of like this is a relationship where you could prosper together or you could prosper apart. It's going to be very healing either way. There's a great deal of potential love here, though. So I'm, I'm, I'm tilting towards it being together. But the, the healthy thing about this is it's not codependent. So there's, there's a kind of a sense that, and it's not rushed, and it's different. And, that, and what that is going to be just needs to be given time to sort of come forward. So that's very, very positive. I mean, this is a very positive energy that I'm getting overall. So let's see what spiritual gifts. Oh, no, firstly, no, sorry, we've got to do the love language. I almost forgot this in the other one as well, too. So I just want to get three cards for the love language for each of you because sometimes we think there's a conflict when there isn't. It's just that, you know, some people, their love language is, you know, we'll go out to dinner, you know, like once a week and, and really enjoy, you know, all the kind of pleasures of life together. And somebody else might be, well, actually, I'd much prefer to have a conversation every day. Like, and it's it's kind of like just getting that balance because it's, so this is to give you an idea of what, they want to experience in terms of love language to know that they're loved and also what you need from them just to see if there's any dissonance because sometimes it's worth knowing that there's no right or wrong about it so for them page of pentacles reversed 
the hanged man reversed, the seven of pentacles, okay. And for you, justice, the three of pentacles reversed, the three of cups. Okay, all right, so for them... They like any kind of different thinking, quirky stuff or whatever. If you if you come make them think differently, talk, like they really like to talk. They love to talk about philosophy. They love to talk about life. They All of that kind of stuff, that really connects to them. They feel like that they're, they're having a, a opportunity to get to something more. And again, it's sort of connecting to the combined energy. So they love that. They love what's different about you, anything that's different. They don't necessarily want you to be conventional. In fact, with the Page of Pentacles reverse, they're not really interested in 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 conventional stuff so they may not be the sort of person who thinks you know you have to have the rules of the three dates or you know you, you, you this is the way you romance somebody or whatever they're they're into things that are different quirky that are that are more about you and them and they they like to see that everything is an investment like they like to see that you're putting the time and energy into into growing the thing growing, you know, like being together and that's a very material thing spending time together is important for you, you like things that are fair. So it's sort of if, if if they were always deciding what to do, that wouldn't feel fair. If they were making you always decide what to do, that wouldn't feel fair. You like to see things that are fair and balanced. You don't want to spend a lot of time with friends. You much prefer maybe sometimes one good friend or something like that or in times of celebration, but you really want this to be the two of you together. So if they constantly said, let's go out with our friends, that wouldn't work for you. Um, you would sometimes fine, but for the most part, you want this to be about the two of you. And as I say, in, in when you're looking at the kind of there's a very strong intellectual thing here, you you are really open to innovation and different things, but you need to see that this person is fair, that there's a, a, a genuine sense of justice associated with what they believe. And I don't think there's anything that's really kind of dissonant there. I just think that they both of you like to spend time together. Um, and I think these work quite nicely to show that you both are working on and, and nurturing the relationship. So that's good. So let's look at the spiritual gifts that each of you have that come into play with this relationship. So for your person, spiritual teacher, priest or priestess, yeah, they're very spiritually advanced. Like they're, they're knowledgeable. When I say spiritually advanced, I do not mean one person is better than the other. As I said in the introduction, if you did listen to the introduction, I just mean that they have you know, learnt certain things or, or put an emphasis on that in the same way that somebody who becomes a great athlete puts an emphasis on physical exercise. So they are, they are very much that. And Ascension Path 12, yeah, very, they're, they're a bit of a guide. A guide to you and a guide to others, but they they know they know not to tell you what to do. So that's that's important. And for you, Ascension Path Three Air, yeah, there's a very strong connection between your minds, very strong mental connection between you, very strong telepathy, I would think. And you are at their level. It's not really. It's just I think they might have. It's almost like they focused on magic or something like that. And. Also, we have Life Path 7, the Dreamer, Ruling Planet Neptune. So, okay, so the difference between you may be that you are a very natural psychic. They are a learned psychic. But, like, otherwise, as I say, it's much more of an equivalent energy. You both have spiritual gifts that are being brought to this. Let's see what sort of spiritual guide each of you has around this relationship. So, for them, Commander Ashtar, Starseed, Space Travel, Galactic Guides. Okay, there could be a Starseed connection between the two of you. It certainly is this sort of like air, intellectual, yeah, that kind of sci-fi almost sort of energy about them. So so that, that kind of energy, a kind of like extra dimensional energy is guiding them in relation to this. And for you... Archangel Uriel, illumination, inner power, ideas into form. So, so yeah, so this is like, it's more like they're, as I say, it's more like they're learned around the spiritual stuff and it's more like you're a natural. But nevertheless, you kind of come together and it's the right balance. As you prosper, you become more together. You bring those two things together. So that's really interesting. So let's also get you some stars, some stars to guide each of you around the relationship. So for them... So I think for some of you who haven't met, as I say, this might be somebody you're dreaming about. 
So this or somebody who's coming in your future as well. Just felt I wanted to say that. So around the stars for them, we have the twelfth house. Yeah, I do think that before you meet or before anything happens, a lot happens in the five D level in the, the realm of dreams. Pay attention to that. And fixed. Yeah, once they've decided they want someone, they want someone. <laughs> like they are very, very loyal. That's why you can be trusting around them. And once they know, they know. Do you know what I mean? And you can trust. The astrology energy for you. We have Taurus. This is meant to be something that's a good life, something that is material, something that prospers. So I say, I think many of you could be a golden couple or power couple in some way. And Capricorn, yeah, very earthy. Very, very much of the way. And for many of you, you may meet through work or business in some way or some earthly, you know, very earthy-based activity like exercise or gardening or something. I mean, it could be anything. But there's very much that sort of sense around it of the material is, is important here. Okay. So to just finish off, I'm just going to get a card from the Rainbow Oracle for sort of like around the combined energy, either a kind of a synopsis of all of it or a last piece of information about the energy that you create together on sort of the 5D spiritual level. Well, that's interesting. This came up for one of the others. So some of you may have come to two to readings and get two layers of this particular relationship. But creative engineer, you have a creative intelligence capable of multiple solutions. Yeah, there's an intelligence here and a creative energy. So you can, you can design this. This is why I keep feeling like it's not necessarily... I mean, it could be for some of you a twin flame or a soul twin, but I don't think it has to be. I think there's sort of like a two energies coming together at exactly the right time to prosper together more together, but equally sovereign to themselves. So it's sort of like this, you can have the choice, you know, what type of relationship it is, how close you are, but it's a very positive energy. So I hope this resonates for you. I hope you enjoyed the reading. If so, please like the video and subscribe. If you care to share in the comments, I'd love to hear. Otherwise, I hope to see you in future readings.